tuning in to Columbia 548 News. My name is Jordan Drohan. We are going to get you in the know about the recent federal ban of microbeads. If you're familiar with this term microbeads, you have probably seen them in products such as toothpaste as well as various face and body washes. However shocking to the many microbead product users, this ban should really come as no surprise as they have been found to have severe environmental impacts. We're going to delve into this topic a little bit further to find out about the economic impacts of this ban as well as the environmental impacts. We're going to go to our consumer analysis representative, Allie, who is at a local convenience store to give us a little bit more information on this ban as well as the products associated with it. The U.S. ban on microplastics and personal care products will go into effect by July 2017. The ban impacts multi-billion dollar companies like Colgate Palmolive, Johnson & Johnson, L'Oreal, and Procter & Gamble. The popular skincare brand Neutrogena currently has 22 products on the market containing microbeads, including their oil-free acne wash and their deep clean cream cleanser. Even, even brands like Avena, who claim to be naturally sourced, contain microbeads, like their clear complexion cream cleanser. But there are brands on the market currently that do not contain polythylene. They include St. Ives and Biore. Until, until 2017, when the ban will come into effect, you as a consumer can do your part by checking the personal care products and not buying the ones that contain the inactive ingredient polythylene. Thank you, Allie. We are now going to turn to Katie, our environmentalist at the University of South Carolina Earth, Water, and Sciences Department, to give us a little bit more information on the environmental impacts. Microbeads are plastic small scrubbing components used in hundreds of personal care products such as skin exfoliants and soap. They can slip through most water treatment systems as they wash down the drain, which makes them contributor to the world's pollution problem. A major concern with microbeads is that because of their small size, they have a large surface area by volume. As a consequence of their use, huge numbers of ready-made, highly efficient toxic accumulators have been intentionally released into the environment. Microplastics in the environment are known to accumulate toxic contaminants already present in water, such as pesticides, um, flame retardants, and PCBs. They're about the same size as fish eggs, which means that essentially they look like food. So our concern is that essentially they are making their way into the food web. A 2013 study found that phytoplankton and zooplankton at the base of the food chain can ingest microplastics. This means that problem, the problem isn't just for larger organisms such as fish, this is a major bioaccumulation issue that is developing into an even bigger biomagnification issue as it affects multiple trophic. Lastly, to give us insight on the economic impacts of this ban, we have Chief Economist Bree Kavanaugh here of the American Economic Association. Thank you, Jordan, for the introduction. Uh, this ban on microbeads is a perfect example of the tragedy of the commons, which states that individuals or firms will, will act in their own self-interest uh, when dealing with common shared resources, such as our water supply. And this may be in direct conflict with what is good for society as a whole. In this situation, firms are selling products uh, that produce a negative, negative externality, uh, microbeads, based on consumer demand, and this causes damage to a shared resource, our water supply. And a negative externality occurs when one action affects a third party indirectly and causes harm. And I will show this impact on a basic supply and demand. So here we have a basic supply and demand curve. Uh, on the x-axis, we have the quantity, and on the y-axis, we have the cost. Um, in equilibrium for the firm, uh, the marginal private benefit, which is this line right here, is equal to the demand, which is equal to uh, the marginal private cost, or the supply curve, right here. So in equilibrium for the firm, both of these are equal at Q1, um, and then the cost would be on the y-axis here. Um, but because there is a neg negative externality, um, there is a marginal so social cost, which is this uh, line right here, and this triangle, um, colored in green, is the dead weight loss to society because of the neg negative externality. So if we had a government regulation or some kind of inf intervention to offset this externality, the, e the social equilibrium would be at Q star, where the marginal private cost to the firm equals the marginal social cost to society. 
So to correct a negative externality, uh, to make the marginal private cost equal the marginal social cost, as I depicted in the graph beforehand, we could do one of the following. One option would be to tax the firms that use products containing microbeads, but this could not eliminate the problem fully if the tax is not set at the right amount. So if it's set too high or too low, the firms won't act accordingly. Um, and it would also be too costly for the government to monitor the effect of a tax. Um, and also we could have the water treatment plants install um, better filters to filter out the microbeads that are going through the water supply. However, this would be very costly to the water treatment firms and unfair to them. Or we could also assign private property rights to water supply to the water supply system, which would also be too controversial and not politically feasible since water is a common pool resource. Um, so I believe the federal ban on microbeads is the best way to address this problem because it is costless to the government um, and it forces companies to find better alternatives um, to microbeads such as biodegradable exfoliants like salt or oatmeal. And it also can keep consumers informed on their choices and the impact of their choices, which if a consumer finds out um, that a product containing microbeads is harmful to the environment, it will reduce the demand for the product. All of us at Columbia 548 News would like to thank our experts, Allie, Katie, and Bree, as well as to the viewers of our program. Stay classy, Columbia. I'm Jordan Dronin.